All right, thank you. My name is Nick Botinas, and today I'd like to present to you a phantom and in vivo demonstration of swept synthetic aperture imaging. We know that in ultrasound, our lateral resolution is diffraction limited, and as the focal spot size is given by the expression lambda z over d. When we do deep abdominal imaging, we're trying to image targets at a large distance z and at a long wavelength lambda, trying to achieve enough penetration at depth. The combination of these two factors gives us poor lateral resolution, often on the order of several millimeters. One thing that we can do to improve this is to increase the aperture size d. By doing that, we reduce that ratio and improve resolution, but we do that at a cost. Uh, we can either add more receive channels, which we've heard increases the complexity of the back-end electronics, uh, also increasing the cost of the, of the scanner, making this not really a clinically viable solution. Or we can, in, we can increase the individual element size on our aperture, but in doing that we introduce grading lobes as we begin to steer our beam. So instead our proposed solution is to use transducer motion within the imaging plane with the conventional transducer to just simply sim, uh, synthesize a larger effective array. And in doing that we gain the same image quality as we would have with a physically larger transducer. The literature leads us to believe that we would expect in increased image quality as we move to larger aperture sizes, even in the presence of uh, acoustic clutter like we might see in the abdomen. On the left, we see, there we go. on the left, we see improved resolution looking at ex vivo liver samples as we go to a large, in this case, five centimeter piston. On the right is some of our work showing improvements in image contrast as we increase the aperture size looking at in, uh, in vivo liver vasculature. Both of these suggest that we should continue to move towards larger array sizes. The method that we'll use to do this is uh, synthetic aperture imaging. The literature has a long history of using synthetic aperture imaging with transducer motion to build up larger effective arrays. We, the simplest approach is to use a single element called the monostatic approach, both in transmit and receive, moving that uh, array around, moving that single element around to build up an effective array. If we start with an array, we can do volumetric imaging sweeping the array out of plane to build up an effective volumetric transducer. The proposal here today is to move that array not out of plane but within the imaging plane, building up an effectively larger array and from our preliminary ex vivo results we expect to see a greatly improved lateral resolution moving from the left to the right here. The basis, oops, sorry, the basis of this technique is that mechanical transducer sweep. In this case we sweep in an arc from the left to the right, and as we do so, we precisely track the location of that transducer. As we sweep, we transmit diverging waves, covering the region of interest here in the center. And of course, you can use other virtual source or plane wave techniques to do this, as long as you uh, sufficiently insonify the region of interest. At each of these positions, we acquire a low lateral resolu resolution image. Uh, here we see five samples, each of which has already been spatially registered using that known position information. That sub-wavelength sub positioning allows us to then coherently sum this RF data and build up an, uh, a single high lateral resolution image. The device that we'll use to do this in this study is shown here. It's built on the Ferrisonics Research Scanner Platform, and we're using the P42 phase array transducer, shown over here on the right. Uh, in this case, transmitting three megahertz diverging waves. The array itself is two centimeters wide, and will sweep anywhere between 30 and 50 degrees as we do the study. Uh, that transducer is mounted to a rigid arm fixture uh, attached to an axle here at the end. That axle is coupled to a rotary encoder that gives us our precise positioning information with a known calibration of that rigid arm. The scan protocol that we'll use is to first acquire a full synthetic aperture acquisition. That's our reference image uh, using the full two centimeter aperture in both transmit and receive. So that'll be our, what we call like the conventional image. Uh, we then quickly move the arm to its beginning position and in the course of one second, we sweep it over that desired arc. Uh, so we can do this for, uh, in vivo during a breath hold. As we sweep, we acquire data at a rate of one kilohertz, so we'll build up a thousand frames, each of which has the synchronized position measured from that rotary encoder. Here's an example of what one of those sweeps look like. In the cartoon here, you can see the active red aperture sweeping from right to left. Uh, it's a 50 degree sweep at a 10 centimeter radius. And on the right, you can see the sample image frames. These are, remember, these are low lateral resolution. They come from a single diverging wave. And in this case, we're not using all 1,000 waves. We'd be spatially oversampled. What we've done is to uh, subsample this data to give us equally spaced uh, positions across that arc that we're forming, roughly half a millimeter apart. And we see those 100 frames being played back in this movie here. To combine that data, uh, we have two options. We can do it incoherently. This is our 
typical speckle compounding approach where we see a nice smoothing of that speckle texture as we sweep across and add in more of those frames uh, with phase insensitive data. But because we precisely aligned our data to that sub wavelength precision, we can coherently sum it and we can build up a synthetic aperture that gives us the full range of that gray curve, that 10 centimeter effective array. And we can watch as that speckle pattern gets tighter, edge resolution gets better, and we'll get more movies and begin to quantify this. The last step that we'll do in post-processing is to adjust the lateral spatial frequency content. Uh, our conventional array shows a spatial frequency content that looks like this triangle, where DC is at the middle, emphasizing low lateral spatial frequencies. As we sweep, we extend that region of support in lateral frequency space, uh, giving us higher spatial frequencies and therefore improved resolution, but we've lost that characteristic shape, now equally weighting all of our lateral spatial frequencies uh, roughly the same. We'll see how this distorts the point spread function, we can apply an appetization uh, on our data to restore that shape and restore our point spread function. Uh, and of course, we can do anywhere a more moderate approach in between the two as well. So our first characterization is using a point target. So a wire target at a depth of 11 and a half centimeters in a water tank. Uh, our reference image, that full synthetic aperture, is on the left showing poor lateral resolution and very limited region of support in frequency space. As we sweep, we build up that extended region of support which leads to a much tighter point spread function. This is a very large sweep. This is a 56.4 degree uh, sweep. And we see these large diagonal side lobes that are going to contribute to off-axis scattering. As we apply that aptization, we reshape lateral frequency space to give us that more characteristic shape. And we see by trading off some of our main lobe resolution, we can improve the side lobe behavior. And we end up with much more conventional lateral side lobes. Here we'll play back the movie of what happens as we effectively increase the aperture size for uh, three sample wire targets. And we measure the full half max at each of these aperture sizes. We compare to our 3.3 millimeter original full synthetic aperture image. As we begin to sweep, we quickly surpass that resolution, uh, ending up at a resolution on the far right hand side here uh, with the swept synthetic aperture image of 0.41 millimeters. As we apply our aptization to control those side lobes, we Again, sacrifice some of our resolution, going to 0.6 millimeters. That's still an 81.8% improvement over the full synthetic aperture. We can also see the impact of sort of geometric diminishing returns. Uh, we notice that to have our resolution, we need to double our sweep length, which even in the abdomen with large acoustic windows becomes impractical. So there will be a, a limit to doing this in vivo. We can do this in extended targets. Here we see a fetal phantom. Uh, on the left is our full synthetic aperture image. On the right, the 41.4 degree swept synthetic aperture image. We notice much better definition of the skull around the outside, the hyperechoic structure. We see much tighter speckle pattern throughout. Better edge resolution on, these lar on the, the large uh, interior anechoic ventricle. And we also see these two small ventricle structures that previously were on the order of the resolution cell size uh, in the original image. So we can actually see new high resolution targets due to our sweep. We can quantify the improvements that we see in those anechoic regions. Uh, we see an improvement in contrast of 4.2 dB, an improvement in contrast to noise ratio of 17.3%, uh, in addition to the, the resolution improvement that we've noticed uh, qualitatively. Uh, in both these plots, we see a very similar performance as we did in the resolution plots of those geometric diminishing returns, but quickly surpassing uh, the performance of that small two centimeter original array. We have a couple other targets, one of which you've already seen. These are our, what we call grocery store targets, looking at a pack of hot dogs with two holes inserted. Uh, we can see that nice tight speckle pattern, we see better edge resolution, we can make out some of the, the gaps in between the individual structures. Uh, on the bottom we have a pork loin. So again, you see pretty homogeneous structure, but as we sweep, we, all, we pick up, uh, in addition to the, the benefit of resolution, more angular diversity in sampling our specular reflectors. So as we sweep, we light up each of these specular structures uh, from angles that we didn't have in our original array. So added benefits of seeing layers as we sweep. And then as promised, we can do this in vivo in the liver. This is a volunteer in a water tank. Uh, so you can see the top surface of the liver as we sweep across individual frames on the left-hand side. And we synthesize that uh, using our precise positioning that coherent synthetic array up to 45 degrees on the right hand side. You notice at first we don't get much data as we're imaging uh, through a shadowed region. We believe there's a rib there. But we start to pick up data and 
uh, increase the frequency of the speckle, we see better edge resolution. And I will pause it at the next one to compare to the original full synthetic aperture image. So same orientation, full synthetic aperture on the left, swept on the right. We see tight speckle pattern, good edge resolution on these uh, vessels and organ structures on the left. And we see some fine targets that previously were not visible uh, within the liver itself. Another added benefit of uh, sweeping over a large set of angles is we can actually begin to see into that shattered region a little bit. Uh, but overall, a high quality image, even in the near field, where we begin to see those layers much better. One more example here in the liver, uh, doing that same sweep, in this case a little shorter. We do a 30 degree sweep. And you can see that speckle pattern tightening up, especially in the sort of homogeneous region uh, right in the center here. And you get very nice definition on this vessel down here. Uh, and I'll, again, I'll stop it on that last frame. And you can see some fine targets, a hyperechoic structure and a small hypoechoic structure right here that would be invisible at larger speckle sizes. So we really take advantage of having that 8 to 10 centimeter swept array in building up these high resolution images. So in conclusion, we've demonstrated improvement in vivo uh, using large aperture sizes, in this case with the swept synthetic aperture technique with our research device. And we've shown in phantoms that uh, using this device we can improve resolution, contrast, and contrast to noise ratio. Improvements as we expect to carry over into our in vivo uh, images even when they have acoustic clutter. There are limitations. With this device in particular, we're restricted to non-contact scanning. All of these uh, experiments were done in a water tank so that we don't disrupt the precise calibration of that rigid arm. If it were to deflect, uh, it would, ru would ruin the calibration and end up producing uh, incoherent data. We also expect signal decoherence due to aberration, reverberation, and motion effects in vivo. So the faster we can do this sweep, the better. Um, ongoing work is to translate this technique to a more clinically relevant device, something that we can do contact scanning with and would give us full six degree of freedom spatial positioning as opposed to this single prescribed arc shown here. And more fundamentally, studying the limitations of large apertures and coherent beam forming in the presence of acoustic clutter that might disrupt that uh, coherent signal processing. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge our funding from the NIH, uh, some people who have helped with this work, and the rest of the Duke Ultrasound program. Thank you.